So today I'm going to show you the simple way of porting certain songs between Sonic games for a Sonic hack. Now you'd think it would be as easy as just copying a song file from the Sonic 1 disassembly, for example, to the Sonic 3 disassembly, but unfortunately it is nowhere near that simple. There are so many compatibility issues between the various games that, uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you the simple way, but before I get to that, I'm just going to cover the differences and why it's such a nightmare to do this kind of thing. So the first problem is the bytecode difference. We've found the sound, the, the, the source code to the sound engine used in the various Sonic games. And we know from this that the music was actually closer to code than just a, a file. It was more of a code file. The disassemblers don't, well, don't, they don't do this though. Which is a problem, because when the code is turned into a program, well, each game did it differently. So you can't take a file meant for Sonic 1 and put it in Sonic 2, because it was built for Sonic 1, or it was built for Sonic 2, and so on. So you need to convert them. So, you used to be able to use a tool, like Music Point Fixer or something else, where it would return a, like a .bin file to another .bin file. I think that's a bad idea. I think what we should do is what... Let's do it the proper way. Turn it back to code, just like it was in the original Sonic source code. And for that we'll be using Flame Wings SMPS to ASM. Keep in mind there are three things with that name. One by Sonosu, one by Flame Wing, one by... Uh... Well, I mean, the user goes by a bunch of names. Natsumi, Greensnake, uh, Aurora Fields. Sonosu's is an older version of Flame Wings, basically, whereas Natsumi's is completely different and not backwards compatible with the other two, I think. So I don't recommend <laughs> I just recommend Flame Wings. Now the other issue, a major one, um, is missing instruments because when you port a song, the song will only include certain instrument data. The Mega Drive of course, as you can see here, has three types of instrument. But only one of them comes with the music. The rest come with the sound engine. So if you want to port a song, you might also have to port the DACs or the PSGs. In fact, there are even minor differences, or minor compatibility issues with the FM instruments too. But we'll get to that when we get to that. We won't be covering this in this video because of just how much of a hassle it is. But speaking of hassles, the king of hassles, missing coordination flags. Coordination flags, I'm pretty sure in the source code they're just called commands, but this is what we in the community call them. So, yeah, no, they are, they're just commands. They handle music, uh, sorry, volume, uh, playback effects like looping and calling like subroutines, <laughs> subroutines of sound data. I don't really know how to put it. But yeah, they're important. And if a song is, if a driver is missing a coordination flag, then you have to go into the sound, the song code and like dummy out the, the, invocations of those coordination flags and that will cause the music to sound different but if you wanted to actually port a coordination flag from one game to another well you're playing with the very code in the sound driver so unless you're very confident it's well it's complicated and rather intimidating especially for a newcomer then there are the other minor compatibility issues such as like i said FM instrument data is interpreted differently between SMPS 68K and Z80. That can cause an instrument to sound different. There are also issues such as the notice duration duration quirk, which a well documented or well known effect of this bug is if you take Sky Sanctuary from Sonic and Knuckles and put it in Sonic 2 or Sonic 1, at the very beginning there will be notes that either shouldn't be there or there are notes that should be there. My point is, instruments and notes will either play when they shouldn't or they won't play when they should because of this this bug basically and yeah you have to keep your, keep an eye out for those issues too so what i'm going to be describing today is the easy way of porting music where you just bypass all of these issues you deliberately find and port a song which doesn't use any missing coordination flags which doesn't use any missing DAC instruments or PSG envelopes and doesn't rely on 
inconsistent sound driver behaviour. And in this case the options are pretty limited. You could port a song from Sonic 1 to Sonic 2 because Sonic 2's driver is really just an evolved version of Sonic 1's driver and has all of the relevant music data, uh, instrument data. A similar thing happens with Sonic 3 through to Sonic 3D Blast, they all use the same sound driver, just in slight iterations. However, it's not a straight upgrade in that case, because Sonic & Knuckles gets rid of certain DAC samples from Sonic 3, and Sonic 3D Blast gets rid of some DAC samples from Sonic 3 and Sonic & Knuckles. So only certain songs work back and forth between all of them. Now you can go a step higher, and be able to port more songs, but you have to start cheating. Because if, unless you want to go through the horrible hassle of porting PSGs and DACs, you'll have to start supplementing them. For example, Sonic 2 has... I'd say most, if not all, of Sonic 3... Uh, sorry, Sonic 3 has most, if not all, of Sonic 2's drums, but they're not the same ones. Like, they both have snares, they both have kicks, they both have timpanies. But they're not the same, they're different recordings of different types. So the songs will sound different, but they'll use technically the same instrument. But yeah, that's a lot of hacking around. Also, if there are missing coordination flags, instead of porting them, like I said, you can just cut them out. But it will make the song sound different. Then there's just full-on hard mode. Port the PSGs and DACs, port the coordination flags. Work out the sound driver differences, either by editing the sound driver to not behave differently, but you would be breaking other songs potentially by doing that, or you edit the music data itself to not invoke this quirky behaviour. So yeah, if you want to have a horrible hard time, port a Sonic 3 song to Sonic 2, or port a Sonic 2 song to Sonic 1, you'll probably pull your eyes out. So that's it for this <laughs> dumb little PowerPoint presentation, I'm just going to move on to the desktop and get started. So. So to keep things nice and simple, we're going to port a song from Sonic 1 to Sonic 2. I know it's not the fanciest thing in the world, I know a lot of people love porting Sonic 3 songs, but that is, <laughs> that's complicated, as I've hopefully demonstrated. So, to start we're going to grab a Sonic 1 disassembly and a Sonic 2 disassembly. You can of course get them both from the Sonic Retro GitHub page. Hopefully you already know how to go through this process, I, uh, maybe I'll get a video out someday just going over the basics of getting started with Sonic Hacking, but hopefully you're familiar with what a disassembly is and where to get them from and how to build them. I'm just going to set them up real quick myself, just for clarity's sake. So hopefully that, that copy of Sonic 1 extracted properly. Let's just give it a quick build, see if it worked. Well, actually, it doesn't matter, so I'm not building Sonic 1 right now. But yeah, okay, so. On top of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, we are also going to want to download a copy of SMPS to ASM. You might be wondering where the hell you even found that. Well, I believe... Here we go, GitHub Flamewing Flame Driver. Now, you might be thinking, oh god, are we going to port a sound driver? No, we're not. It's just this is where you found SMPS to ASM. I, I don't really know why, but that is how it works. So, yeah, we're just going to want to come in here and we're just going to take SMPS to ASM. So, let's get all this crud out of the way. Yeah, I think... Hmm, I suppose we'll just put it in the root directory. So just take this, put it here. So what we're going to start with is we're going to convert Sonic 2 to use SMPS to ASM. This is a little unfortunate in the case of Sonic 2 because Sonic 2 has compressed music files, but without significant effort, you cannot have compressed music with SMPS to ASM. So yeah, to start with we're going to convert Sonic 2 to use SMPS to ASM to convert all of its music to bytecode. Then we can start porting music from Sonic 1. So, 
Let's make a start, shall we? Suppose we'll begin with. Yeah, should be safe to edit here. You can enable these. <laughs> I mean, I did make them and all, but we're just not going to touch that for now. So. I wonder. Just thinking about where's a good place. Maybe. Maybe this isn't a good place to begin. Let's just close that. Let us edit the main file. So here we go. We have a bunch of macros and whatnot. Okay, and we're just going to include SMPS to ASM. However, we do to a little configuration before we can move on from this. We need to define the Sonic driver version. Now, version 1 is Sonic 1, version 2 is Sonic 2, version 3 is Sonic 3, version 4 is Sonic Knuckles, version 5 I think is Sonic 3D Blast, and I think version 6 is Flame Driver, I think. I'm not sure. But yeah, we're going to set that to 2. Now we also need to define a couple of other things. Don't worry if this looks absolutely crazy to you. It is. It's it's overwhelming, to be fair. So don't worry about it. We just need to define four of these. One for Sonic 2, one for the 3, one for Knuckles, one for 3D. It, it's just telling it telling SMPS which drums are available. I'm not really sure why it just does, but here we go. So, yeah, okay. So because we're editing Sonic 2, we have the Sonic 2 drums, so one. And the others, they're set to zero because we don't have them. So, from this alone, we should be able to just build the ROM and it should work. Or not. Okay. Ah, sorry. I might be a little rusty. been a while since I've done assembly, but alright, let's try that again. Alright, there we go. And we have a ROM. We're not done yet at all. We just got it to like run the code, but the code doesn't actually do anything yet. So now, we need to go to the game's music data and start swapping the binary files with code files. We'll just be sticking to the music for now. We won't. <laughs> yeah, we won't be converting the sound effects. Well, maybe I should. I don't know. It's a. Hmm. I mean, I suppose the knowledge would be beneficial. Okay, well, maybe, okay, maybe at the end of this we'll convert the sound effects too. But. I mean, to be fair, you could just apply the logic. The method of porting music or turning the music to assembly and just apply it to the sound effects it's really the same thing yeah just trying to find the start of the music data it's a little uh, little messy so here we go as you can see it does be include with a couple of bin files we're going to replace these with includes on asm files and we're just going to do that for all of these uh, yeah, see you in a bit. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think this pause button just doesn't want to work. Yeah, it just occurred to me that I should probably explain why we're converting the current songs if they're already in a format the game supports. It's uh, a little complicated. Well, one, again, the music is compressed. And rather than go through the effort of decompressing it, and sorry, I'm not making myself clear. There are just issues, maybe not in Sonic 2 because it's compressed music, but in Sonic 3 definitely, not quite in Sonic 1, but to an extent in Sonic 2 and to a huge extent in Sonic 3, you need to convert all of the music to assembly because if you start inserting songs, like moving them around, you break them all because they expect to be where you left them because again, they're code, they got turned into binary and binary tends to not like getting moved around. So we have to convert everything to assembly. 
Now, that's all done, but these were just the compressed songs. The songs that weren't compressed are actually half code, half binary data. As you can see, it's not just not just numbers, but some of it is numbers. So yeah, just get rid of all this crud, replace it. This ain't good enough. This hasn't been tanned. Well, actually, I mean, I suppose it is good enough, but whatever. Let's just get it over with and convert everything to SMPS to ASM. And of course, there's a big one, the credits. As I said, binary data doesn't like getting moved around. And um, even the people who disassembled this game knew that. Hence why they turned the uncompressed songs back to code. Just not enough back to code for me. SMPS I think does a full proper job. This is more of a more of a hack. It's just for making sure pointers don't get screwed up. But you know, if we're gonna convert everything to SMPS to ASM, might as well convert the uncompressed stuff as well. Now keep in mind there is some stuff I'm not exactly gonna go over. For example how music has to fit within Z80 banks which can't be any bigger than 8,000 bytes. It's really, eh, it's just a subject for another time. It's very complicated and hopefully it's something you can go and research yourself. Like these banks, they have to be at most 8,000 bytes big. If you can't fit every song you want in a bank, then you either have to put it in another bank or add a new bank because there's only two by default, I think. Or, I don't know. So... This is just bank one, there is another bank, which we also need to convert, so here we go. And yeah, all it has in it is the continue jingle, I'm not not too sure what's going on there, but yeah. So now we're going to replace all these bin files with ASM files. Now remember Flame Driver? It actually has converted ASM files in it. So if we go to S2, music, you can take the improved or the original. They shouldn't, the improved version shouldn't sound any different. It just like fixes maybe little bugs or inefficiencies. For now, we're just going to use these. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate to say the least. For whatever reason, Flamewing uh, renamed the music files, so... We have to just go in and rename all the files to match these. Great. I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, continue. What's continue called? Nancy. So, just copy the name. Put it in. And just do the same for, let's say, hidden power sun. Yeah, just and so on. I guess I'll see you in a bit. Well, that took a while. So yeah, I've gone through and renamed all the files to match their new names. And as you can see, when I build it, I actually get an error. So if you take a peek, it's because yeah, the sound bank has become too big. It can only be eight thousand. It's gone to nine D three four. So the solution to this as per the instructions in here, is to just move something to the other bank. Now you might have seen that the first bank is actually quite tiny. It only has one song in it. Now to be f I don't know how this would have looked in the original source code. It's all just a matter of alignment. It's not like that bank is small necessarily, it's just that it was aligned at the <clears throat> it was aligned at the end of another bank, I think, but we won't, we won't worry about that. Either way, yeah, we're gonna make the ROM a bit bigger. <laughs> like it's normally one megabyte, it's gonna become two megabyte now, I think. But yeah, just take a song, just take like a big chunky song, and shove it in the other bank. So let's take the credits. That's a pretty big song, and. Uh, 
We're also going to want to take its little pointer here. Put that here as well. I just want to double check what this is used by. Hmm. What the heck? Ah, okay. Hold on a tick. Right, so because we moved a song to another bank, we do have to fidget around with a table in the sound driver. Yeah, sorry about this. I, I don't know why the sound driver disassembly can't just not do this, but yeah. So I'm going to come here and replace this with, well, oh, how do I put this? We'll just take this, put it here, replace that with that and this with that, get rid of the original, and there we go. We should, we should be good. However, well, we'll just see if it builds for now. No. Don't tell me we have to... Oh, <laughs> we've got to move more songs. Good grief. Okay. So... Well, drowning is a bit of a short one. Let's move Hidden Palace, maybe. Didn't think I'd be showing you how to do this in this video, but hey ho, this is what happens when you want to add music. You just have to fumble around like this. And of course, we have to do this again, but this time with Hidden Palace. So, yeah. Replace the label, replace the pointer. Somehow I doubt that that song was 600 bytes. Yeah, I didn't think so. Another song or two and we should be good to go. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Phew, okay. So I ended up migrating a con you know, moving hilltop zone to the other bank as well. But now the ROM finally builds. And as you can see, it's actually 2 meg now. Yeah. So, oh boy, let's run the ROM and see what happens. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, so we made a mistake, kind of. Remember how we've said we're uncompressing the music? Well, the only way the game knows what music is compressed and which isn't is this little flag here, so we were going to come to this table no matter what, even if the bank wasn't overflowing. Yeah, so after the IV thingy, after the pointer size thingy, yeah, this little plus 20 denotes uncompressed music. So, hmm, yeah, I suppose we'll do this. We could just go into the code and disable the check entirely. But I guess we'll just do this the intended way for now. Now I'm hoping my bod mass is correct. That the division, that all of this math might will occur before the plus 20. I, I hope. But yeah, just do this for every single one. But again, if you want to be sure, you can just go into the code in the sound driver if you know ZAT assembly. And just remove the check entirely so that every song is always assumed to be uncompressed. So just do that for every song and... Yeah, it's unfortunate that a video is showing you how to port music. 90% of it is just showing you how to convert a game to use SMPS to ASM. But I guess that's just the way it is. So, oh, that's the wrong file. Get over here. Right, let's see. Does it work now? Oh, yeah, also because the ROM's now twice as big. The checksum takes twice as long, so the startup times have gone bigger. Right, hopefully, as you should be able to hear without having your ears blasted off if I've set the volume levels correctly. Music's working, cool. Let's, let's start adding some Sonic 1 music. Let's start with that title screen theme. Let's just replace that with the Sonic 1 version. I mean, they're not too different, but, yeah, well, you know. Should be neat. And while we're here, let's just get rid of the old music. We don't need it anymore. So, back in the flame driver folder, let's see. We're going to grab, here we go, the title. I don't even know why the, the music's all renamed because there's no consistent naming scheme. 
Right, now let's also pour... Ooh, what's a fun song to pour or listen to? I mean, Green Hill's overdone. Marble Zone's kind of boring. Starlight, well... How about Scrap Brain? Yeah, we're going to be pouring Scrap Brain. Alright, so... Remember how I said it's not as easy? Porting a song is not as easy as copying and pasting a file and then going into the ROM and just replacing a file name. Well, let's see if I was right. Well, that built safe and sound. Let's see how it sounds. I swear I didn't mean for that pun. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's been a while since I've heard the Sonic 1 version. I didn't realise it had that baseline that I don't think 2 has. Alright, so that worked. Cool, now let's replace... Let's just replace Emerald Hill with Scrap Brain. So, I might be getting a little ahead of myself here, but I think I've shown that with the power of SMPS to ASM, you can indeed turn porting certain songs into a copy-paste job. You just have to go through the rigmarole of converting the game to SMPS to ASM. Now again, it won't be this easy with Sonic 3 music. It won't be this easy with... Well, if you did this to Sonic 1 and you were pointing to Sonic 2 music, because Sonic 2 has extra DAC samples, and I think extra PSG envelopes too. Alright, let's check out all that. Oh, well, hang on. Yeah, Blastem is a, a recent discovery of mine. I used to use Regen, but... Well, it's not on Linux. And unfortunately, Blastem is horribly unstable sometimes. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, let's, let's see how this sounds. Just uh, pick up rings to make, you know, make it clear that this isn't like doctored audio. So, as you can hear, the song has indeed been ported and it works fine and dandy. Let's just close that. Yeah, sorry, I'd let it keep playing, but I'm not entirely sure the audio isn't drowning my voice out. So, but yeah, let's go a little crazier. Let's see what else we can do in the time we have left. I mean, how long has this video been going? Hmm, half an hour ain't bad. Usually they're around an hour, but yeah, I've been trying to shorten that. Well, here's a fun one, the special stage. Now, remember how I said there are minor sound differences? Sonic 1 and 2 support songs with 6 FM uh, tracks. It's, if you don't know what an audio track is, sorry. But it basically, it lets you play 6 FM instruments at the same time. Sonic 3 only lets you play 5. Now, even though no Sonic 2 songs use all six or use six FM instruments at once, because it's based on Sonic 1's sound engine and Sonic 1 does use a six FM song, Sonic 2 allows you to play this song. But Sonic 3 doesn't. You'd have to edit the well, edit the bejesus out of it to restore support for the sixth FM instrument. The reasoning is a little complex, they kind of did it to save RAM, and you might wonder why Sonic 3 only lets you do 5, well it's because it's more of a trade-off. You can either have 6 FMs, or 5 FMs, and 1 DAC. So it's, it's a choice between having a 6th FM instrument, and having drums. But yeah. As I said, this is easy mode. By choosing the right game, and the right songs, Porting is as is, is easy as, and you avoid all the issues, but of course, like I said, you are limited to only certain songs and certain games. Good luck porting anything to Sonic 1.
And well, I suppose that's it for this video. Hopefully, I've, well, broadened your horizons a little. Hopefully, you now understand a little about how porting music goes, and hopefully you can spice up your hacks with some ported music. Now, I c now, if I were to give you some suggestions on to what to research into the future, I mean, you can always make your own music. You can make a MIDI, I believe, and use a, a, a MIDI converter. I think Valley Bell has a few of them to generate SNPS music. You can port songs from other games entirely, but, well, that's very complicated. You can look up the SNPS, SNPS to ASM tool, which allows you to turn a bin file into an ASM file. I believe it's part of MD Tools. Yeah, as I say, if you're very good with complicated stuff, yeah, build this. Use it to turn songs to ASM. But, uh, yeah, it's... I don't think I'm making a video on that, it's just too complex, so... For now, especially if you're a beginner, I just suggest porting songs, particularly the ones that have already been turned back into code by Flamewing. But yeah, so... Hopefully after watching this you now know how to port songs. A handful of songs to a certain combination of games, but ported songs nonetheless. Thanks for watching.